Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you some common fisher technique structural elements that, would be, that you'll be using for your builds. And so these are structural elements. They aren't very involved with the actual movement of the mechanisms, but still you can use them to make a skeleton or framework of them. First, let's start with the quintessential building block, which is the 2x1. So the 2x1 block has ridges in its side, which you'll see very common across all of these elements, and a pin at the end, which is also a very common feature. And these ridges act as the receptors or grooves to accept these pins, which fit very smoothly and very tightly. There's also a ridge at the back for lining up multiple uh, 2x1s. And so this element, alongside its baby brother, the 1x1, one one, is the quintessential element that you'll be using to build most of your structures. So. Just this 2x1 has many variations. I'm sure there's many color variations. I have right now a red version and a gray version. And apparently there is a yellow version, but I could not find one. There's also these 2x1s with these holes in the middle to accept an axle. And so I'll put them right here. So let me bring back the 1x1 one one and show you its partner, the 1x1 one one with two pins on the end. I am not sure if these pins are removable, but I think they might be. But in any case, this has two pins on the end instead of a pin and a ridge on the back. And so these are variations of the 1x1. One one. So I'll put them right here. And a variation of the 1x1 one one is these 1x1s one ones with axle holes. It has two pins, two ridges. But going down the center is a hole that can fit an axle. And a variation on that is the one by one uh, with axle hole, but with a counter bore. You can see that this hole is a bit bigger than the hole on the regular one. On the other side, they are the same size. And so those are our next variations. I could not find a gray version of, the, of these. And so let's say, let's say that you don't want your build to just go vertical and horizontal. You want it to go diagonal. You want it to go at an angle. That's where these angle blocks come in. And so you have a few options to choose from on what angle that you want to use. You have the 60 degrees. Come on, focus. And you can see it says 60 on it. It has two pins, one ridge. Then you have the 30 degree. Come on, focus. It says 30 on it. You might not, you have to take my word for that. And this one has one page, one ridge, one pin, one ridge. Then you have the 15 degree, it says 15, one pin, one ridge. And lastly, the 7.5 degree, one ridge, one pin. And if you want any other variation of degrees, then you can just add um, angle blocks onto each other. For example, if you want 45 degrees, you just add 15 and 30 to get 45. And adding on to those angle pieces, we have a sort of an extender piece that is kind of similar to these, but it's just flat. And it's like a buffer piece to just elongate uh, a piece just a tiny bit more. If you want to add a bit more length to that 2x1, you can just put this on top. And so this one doesn't have a marker to, tell, to indicate, indicate what degree it is because it's 0 degrees. And so we'll put that at the end. And in addition to that flat piece, we also have a flat piece, but instead of a ridge, it has two pins, uh, one on both sides. And so this is just a modification of this extender piece. So, so far, you have a already a really great repertoire of structural elements to use, in addition to what we will cover later. You have these, which are the basic skeleton, these which hold axles, and these which help you make the structure more uh, diagonal. So to complement that all pin piece, there's an all ridge piece. That, as you can see, just has ridges. This is useful if you want to, if you have multiple pieces that have pins at the end that you want to connect together, but with no way to do so, uh, which doesn't come up often, but it might be used somewhere else, which I'm going to connect to the tray with this component that we'll cover in the next video. Boop. Something that I also want to mention is that the axles can fit through each ridge. And so there, these ridges are meant for both pins and axles to fit through. 
And just for a demonstration, this axle also goes through this one by one, as well as this one by one. And these bores. And even this one right here. Next up is this corner piece, which has one pin and two uh, ridges, which I never used when I was in seventh grade, but it could come in handy later. Um, uh, maybe if you want like a seamless connection over a corner, you just put this on the inside. So it goes here. There's also this edge piece, which has one ridge, one, one ridge, one pin. Uh, and this can be used as a way to support like a shelf, for example, or it could be used simply as something to tie something down as a support or reinforcements. But this is a pretty basic 90 degree piece. And if we're talking about shelves, there's also this curious piece here, but I've never used it. So I'm going to say that's for a shelf, but don't take my word on it because that is probably wrong. I'm not sure what these two small ridges do here, but they're here. So we'll just put it there. In addition to what we have right now, there's also some special building plates, such as these ones, which this one has only ridges on it. This one has two ridges um, equal distance from each other from the center and then one ridge in the center. So maybe this could, could be used to combine two uh, pins into one pin output, um, sort of like a jumper plate in Lego. You have a flat plate, uh, which can be used for cosmetic purposes just to cover up pins or to make something smooth so that it can slide across easily. And lastly, you have this pin, this plate right here, which has a ridge on the bottom and just one pin at the top, which uh, really, there's a lot of things that you could do with this um, just because it's just one pin output, one ridge in input. So, I mean, that, may, that makes its use very versatile. Next up are these hinge pieces, which are fairly straightforward in use. One ridge, one pin. And this is one of the pairs, one of the components for the pair, which has an axle sleeve going through it. So instead of using it as a hinge, you can use it as an axle sleeve with this black piece. Uh, although this could also be used as an axle sleeve, just with an added hinge bonus, I guess. Now, another typically cosmetic element that you'll see often is these plates here that are completely smooth on one side and have pins on the other. And these are to cover up any uh, loose ridges that you might find on a build. And that's just to make it look nice, or it could be just used to make a surface smoother, which might help with sliding across it, or uh, for creating a track. And so these, uh, oh no, this is broken. I didn't even realize that. These just simply slide on and stay on. And so you have many variations of this. You have this two by one, this two by two one, this two by, you have this two by six one, this two by two one, this one by four, the one by five one, one by two, one by four, four by two, three by two, one by three, and even one by one that you can use to create those smooth uh, walls. But these are the uh, mounting plates. Apparently that's what they're called. And so with these, you can mount anything that you want onto them. Pretty cool. I also want to point out this very similar one by one that attaches not using a pin, but instead a, I guess, inverse ridge. These two uh, projections sticking out will slide down uh, a ridge in order to fix onto it. So. I want to introduce you to these walls right here, which just slide in between two uh, ridges. And I guess act as structural support or just as something to make the build look nicer. 
Um, these can also be used to make a container um, if you put multiple of them together. And it also comes not just blue, but red colors. And sometimes they can come with a sort of keyhole, um, which I forget what they're used for. But this is a variation on the wall. You might also find these plates right here, which just have a ton of ridges for you to uh, connect anything with pins onto it. And so it's kind of like a mini base plate. Uh, these come also in yellow and apparently blue, but I don't have blue. So these can be used as a, a sort of platform if you're raising the structure on legs or you're hanging it. And you just need a workable build surface for your mechanisms. In addition to these, you also have a essentially mini base plate that has ridges instead of these holes and even has these holes in the middle which these do not and so you can also use this as a platform to build on if you're raising the structure or you're hanging it i forgot to mention the hinges also come in a gray color scheme so fisher technic also has their own beams to be used as support structures which can come like this 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 is a shorter version, a 1x1 one one version, and a 2x2 two two version. And there's also flat versions as well, and curved versions. Those beams can also come in black. They may come in other colors, but right now we don't have those available to us. Something you'll notice about these beams is that they have weird connections on the side here. That's because they actually fix to other similar elements with similar holes using a different type of connection. They use rivets, which insert through the hole the thin way and then turn around to secure it. And so they can secure to other things like these struts right here, which come in multiple lengths and also in multiple different colors. All right, and so lastly, I want to show you these other pieces that connect using the same rivet system to those beams. Oop, this one doesn't count. This piece right here is actually uh, a bit of an overhang piece, which we can just lump together with the rest of the flat plates. And you can use that for cosmetics or for making a lip on which to secure something else. And while I'm here, I'll mention these two uh, elements that interface with wheels, uh, which I never really used when I was in, in seventh grade, but they could be useful um, for later. All right, so these are the elements that you might have to build structures when you're working with Fisher Technic. This is a very long video, so I might split it up into two just to make things more succinct and easily easy to digest. But we'll see. In our next video, I'll show you just some other miscellaneous pieces that might be used to connect or secure some of the Fesher Technic elements. So go check that out. But for now, this has been a 45 minute recording. I'll see you in the next video.